Welcome to the WADA channel. I'm Jerry from the Institute of Marine Fisheries and Oceanology of UPV CFOS. Conducting length and weight measurements in fishes are among the widely used techniques, if not the most, when dealing with these aquatic resources. Although the process seems straightforward and intuitive, there are actually important guidelines and rules to know and familiarize when doing these tasks. This video aims to summarize these points and demonstrate the proper way of performing the length and weight measurement in fisheries. The first thing to consider is the purpose of the measurements to be taken, whether it is for commercial fisheries, recreational fisheries, or scientific research. This is often the case for different commercial and recreational fisheries, which are typically subjected to the regulations of their respective government or management boards. The best example would be the pinching of caudal lobes in fin fishes when measuring the total length. These differences will inevitably affect the length measurements of the specimens and, in turn, the determination of violations and catch limits. Another example would be the preference of using standard length in systematic or taxonomic studies. What is common among these mentioned examples is that accurate measurement of the fish lengths, even up to the smallest possible units or decimal places, are important. However, there are instances wherein greater efficiency or speed is prioritized over accuracy, such as in field sampling for stock assessment that often deal with numerous samples and typically use class sizes to hasten the process. This also applies to weight measurements. Depending on your objective, the data may have to be obtained just from the total weight of the catch, a number of samples, or from every individual fish. For some biological studies, various parts of the fish may need to be weighed separately, like the stomach for diet and ecological studies, gonads for the estimation of egg numbers, and livers for condition assessment. Thus, you must always know the reason why you are measuring and what are the practiced guidelines in your community or field of study. The next considerations are the body form and structures of the fish species to be measured, as well as its state during the time of measurement. Although the choice of length dimension is arbitrary, this can be generally influenced by the existing recommendations for each species, which is mainly based on the caudal fin structure and its resistance to damage. Apart from taxonomists who use the standard length to deal with preserved and partly damaged specimens, most fisheries biologists measure either total length or fork length, but neither method has a clear advantage over the other to be accepted as a universal standard. This is because there will always be instances wherein one of these options is not suitable to use. Nevertheless, for both length and weight measurements, the fish should be ideally measured while it is fresh and wet. In this way, the fish will be close to its relaxed life condition since fish tend to shrink rapidly upon drying. This is often not a problem when measurements are taken in fishing vessels or in markets at the time of unloading. But if samples are taken away for later observation in a laboratory, a way of converting measurements to their fresh and wet condition from frozen or preserved state may have to be used. To better illustrate the considerations mentioned so far, let us first proceed with the actual process of measuring fish lengths. Before going to the field or working in a laboratory, the measuring and recording tools should be prepared ahead of time. Measurements are made with special measuring boards, rulers, tapes, and calipers. There are also electronic measuring boards that utilize barcoding to hasten the process when dealing with numerous samples. For length measurements, you have to first lay the fish flat next to your measuring tool. Generally, length measurements are made with the fish lying on its right side, snout to the left, on a measuring board consisting of a wooden or metal base carrying a center scale and a headpiece or nose block against which the snout is gently pressed. The mouth is closed, then the fish body and tail are straighted along the midline and the reading is taken from the scale. When dealing with fresh specimens, you can directly proceed with the measurement. But if the fish is already on the rigor mortis or have been preserved, it should be flexed gently before they are measured. In certain circumstances, wherein fish are to be measured alive, like in tagging or monitoring experiments, it may be necessary to anesthetize the fish and relax it during handling, while a wet cloth is wrapped around its head to avoid sudden movements and injuries. 
As previously mentioned, there are three commonly used length measurements in a fish, the total length, fork length, and standard length. We will demonstrate each measurement and discuss its advantages or disadvantages. The total length is measured from the anterior extremity of the fish to the tip of the longest caudal fin rays in a straight line, and not over the curve of the body. However, take note that interpretations about this definition may differ for species with fork caudal fin. For example, some practice that the two lobes are moved or pinched to the position, which gives the maximum length measurement. If the caudal fins are unequal, the longer lobe is used, excluding the caudal filaments if present. On the other hand, some sources refer to this length dimension as the pinched tail length or maximum total length, and differentiates the total length as the measurement when the caudal fin is in a relaxed position. Hence, it is necessary to specify the exact process used in determining the total length when reporting and comparing values from different sources. Conversion tables have also been developed to resolve this, but it may be better to measure both dimensions if only a few samples are being analyzed, such as in taxonomic studies, or choose the method used by your scientific community and government agencies when dealing with numerous samples. In most cases, total length is frequently chosen because it is quick and easy to measure. In fact, international fisheries councils and commissions like ICES recommend total length as a dimension to be measured for all species, except for tunas and salmonids that have rigid and deeply forked caudal fin. For this species, fork length is always preferred. The fork length is measured from the same starting point in the tip of the snout to the posterior end of the middle caudal rays, the point where the tail fin separates. This measurement is used instead of standard length for fishes on which it is difficult to ascertain the end of the vertebral column. Also, fork length becomes handy in situations when damages to the tip of the tail can make it difficult to measure total length, which is often the problem with small samples like anchovies. However, this approach is not possible if the tail of the fish is frayed and the fork of the species is not well-defined or absent like in eels. Fork length is mostly used in fisheries biology and not in systematics. Standard length is the shortest among the three length dimensions and is simply the measurement without the caudal fin. Typically, it is measured only up to the mid-lateral posterior edge of the hypural plate if the fish has one or to the posterior end of the vertebral column if it has none. The standard length is rarely used in fishery studies, except in systematics or taxonomy wherein it is considered as the standard length dimension. This is mainly because the ends of the caudal fin rays are often bent or missing in preserved specimens in laboratories or museums. Its lesser popularity can be attributed to the inherent difficulty of accurately recording fish measurements with the working speed used in the field. Nevertheless, whichever length dimension and method is used, it is important to always indicate them when reporting and publishing your data to prevent confusion. This also applies to the unit of measurement used, in which the metric system is always recommended. Always record your data before you proceed to the next measurement of fish sample. It is advised to work in pairs if possible, especially if you are dealing with several samples. An individual can place the fish on the board and reads the length, while the other records the measurements called out by the first. In this section, we will discuss other special cases to consider when conducting length measurements. When dealing with the rays and other dorsal ventrally flattened fishes, samples should be measured while lying straight on their ventral surfaces. For rays, this length is used, which is measured from the tip of the snout to the posterior edge of the pelvic fins. Sometimes, this width rather than the overall length is recorded as linear dimension. In the case of seahorses, their standard length is obtained by adding the measurements of the head length, trunk length, and tail length. Measurement is typically done with the use of a ruler in underwater surveys and the seahorses are aided by divers to deploy their tails to the full extent. A common practice in fisheries research, such as stock assessment, is to group fishes into size classes. 
Choice of the class interval for recording length measurements is a matter of judgment, but it is usually made in 1 cm units for species that go larger than 30 cm and in 0.5 cm units for species that do not reach 30 cm. Remember that once a wide size class has been used, it is impossible to regroup the data into narrower size classes. But conversely, data first grouped into narrow size classes can be regrouped into wider size classes. When reading length measurements for length groups, the fairly universally agreed method is using the unit below the actual value. For example, all specimens with actual length measurements between 20 cm and 20.99 cm should be recorded as 20 cm. For very small species and larval fish, it may be necessary to work with 1 mm intervals, but this is exceptional. In such cases, measurements using a caliper might be more appropriate.